My name is Pat Cruz and I'm a birch barker. We're in Malax Band of Ojibwe land. I make baskets and all kinds of different styles of birch bark stuff. And then I got cut out, I got shaped it. I wanted to do something different. And birch bark was a route for me to do that. I wanted to make canoes, I wanted to make baskets. I just like that stuff. And it stuck with me since I was little. So I've been doing birch bark off and on for like 30 years. Practically most of my life I've been doing cultural things because birch bark and, and the culture go hand in hand. So without birch bark, we would never have wigwams to live in and survive a sustainable winter. Like it's 30 below zero, right? If you've seen a real Ojibwe wigwam, you would understand, aha, this is how they did it. This is culture, this is the way it is. And then what about the birch bark canoe? We were able to travel from east coast, west coast, all the way to Montana through all the rivers and portage. What about bowls and cups? Medicine, all come from the birch tree. So birch bark goes hand in hand with culture. There's no perfection. There's no ever trying to be perfect with birch bark as you, things, as you see things crack, things break, things happen. And every piece of art that I made, whether large or small, is stressful. And it's like you try to perfect something that's an imperfect thing. As you can tell that, see it wants to go one way or another. See how it did that? You can, if it won't work one way, you can work another. And it's important to make sure that you be mindful of any art, anything that you're trying to do Native American. There's never perfection. And you're just the same as any art or any tree or anything. We're imperfect. So we try to mimic a good thing, but at the same time, not trying to be perfect. I have a style from the old school to new school. So I, my inspirations are the original people, like uh, old school Ojibwe baskets, and their baskets are phenomenal. If you've seen them, you would understand. So what we're doing is we're trying to tell a story with it through the art. So that's what a birch bark painting is. It's like a, like I take a flat piece of birch, put it on wood, and then I put a design on there, whether it's floral or turtle or a tree. It's a giant picturescapes of a whole forest with animals in it. But it's all different colors of birch bark. Some of my ideas for the birch bark paintings was uh, there used to be scrolls and they would tell the history of us. So they would use these things to teach you how to hunt, how to survive, and that's what the storytelling bark is about, the paintings, is to teach you how to understand that nature is, is as important as each of our family members, the water, the air, everything we live on, uh, no litter and all that, it's important and we teach that through the paintings. My apprentice Terry Hum found his cradle at the Libertyville, Illinois Dunn Museum. And she got a hold of him and arranged for us to go meet the people. We went and looked at it, took pictures, and took a little measurements and stuff. And then we came home and I spent three months trying to design it and make the same similar thing. But the cradle is so important because they were making these things in 1800s. And that's the last time anybody made one. We were lucky to be the two people to actually remake something so special as this cradle because now we made the same thing in this generation instead of it being lost 200 years ago, 190 years ago. I would take up uh, novel words to make people who are not Native American understand how important that is culturally to us to remake such a thing and to have someone alive on the planet doing these things or to teach it. It's hard to teach, it takes months, years. It's not something you learn overnight. What I would like people to take away from my art 
is the planting of more birch bark trees to recognize the value of this tree, recognize the medicinal value, the baskets, the canoes, the finer art, and we're actually trying to create something that lasts for generations and generations because our lives don't last that long. It's just trying to leave uh, history for your family that this is what I did while I was here. And these are the nice things I tried to make to explain what I was doing while I was here. Funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public.